In this tutorial, I want to show you how to quickly isolate a material. So here I have a compound material consisting of two different materials, so the sand and the pebbles. If I want to work just on the pebbles, I want to view the material in isolation. To do this, I will use the Set Nodes to Shader tool. The Set Nodes to Shader tool was introduced in a previous Mario Stinchback version, but has been improved to support materials in this version. Let me quickly just show you the material workflow for this. First off, you have to make sure to have a shader selected inside of your shaders palette. Then you simply click on the material, you go to miscellaneous and use the set nodes to shader. You can also find this in the new hotbox, which is on the F8 key. So I press F8, go to the isolate submenu, you can use set nodes to shader here. As you can see, the material has been relinked to your shader. If we select another material, press F8 again, go to isolate and set nodes to shader. We are switching to the other material. If no material is selected and you execute the set nodes to shader, it will toggle between the last two toggled materials. In material mode, the set nodes to shader works with materials as well as multi channel nodes. So I could also use this one, but because this one was the original connection, I could just also use the reset shader, which resets the mode to the original. So this is already the new and improved functionality of the set nodes to shader tool, and as you can see, it quickly allows you to isolate your materials. To make this a complete tutorial of the set nodes to shader functionality, let me also show you the original functionality of this. So before we had the material workflows, we had to have separate node streams that feed into a shader. So the tool was designed to toggle between separate node streams. To do this, I again need to have a shader selected. And in the shader, I need to have channels assigned. So here you can see I have my channels assigned. And if I look in the node graph, you can see the channel nodes here that feed directly into the shader. To make this tool work with the original functionality, you need to save a shader preset. So I do this by right mouse clicking on the shader and save the shader preset. Shader presets will save all the settings of your shader. So also the slider settings, but as well as the channel assignments. The next time you create a shader again, like for example, a shader of the type Arnold, then all these settings will be automatically restored. A side effect of this shader preset is that I now have information what channels are assigned to this. So if I select another bunch of nodes and execute the set nodes to shader, the tool will look through the save presets and check the channel names. If an instance of a channel name appears in the selected nodes, then these nodes will be relinked to the appropriate slot of the shader. So here, for example, I had a channel assigned that was called diffuse weight. And I also have an instance of this name diffuse weight happening in one of these nodes that I had selected. So now the tool knows that I need to assign the sand diffuse weight to the diffuse weight of the shader. And the rest of the functionality is identical to what I showed in material workflow. So if I again set nodes to shader without any nodes selected, it's going to toggle back to your last used one. And I can again toggle it right back. And I can also reset the shader to what was originally set when I first executed it. So this is the set nodes to shader functionality with all the improvements as well as the traditional functionality. And I hope you enjoy it and it's really useful. So give it a go. Thank you.